Right. Let's start again. So here I'm going to open some summarized data. This is for leaf miners. Leaf miners are parasites of any kind of plant, but I'm just going to focus on holly leaf miners. I think they have different species for different plants. So they leave a mark on the leaf where they've taken all of the chlorophyll out of it. So you end up with a brown patch or a yellow patch. So what this study was trying to do was look at the frequency of leaf miners at different heights on the tree. So if I go to variable view and I click on values, I can see that value one in height corresponds to 0 to 1.99 meters, value two corresponds to two to 3.99 meters, and value three corresponds to four to 5.99 meters. Then I've got how many there are in each particular case. Now this is a summary file. Now, as I said when we did contingency tables earlier and we we're looking at qualitative data, that's not how you would actually store the data when you were collecting it. So when you were collecting it, what you'd first do is mark between zero and two meters and then count each of the leaf miners and you put in an entry for each of them. So you do one, 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 131 times. Then you do two, uh, mark between two meters and four meters and count all of those that were there and give a two. And then you do between four meters and six meters, which there's only two of them, and you'd mark that as three. So this is what the raw data looks like. If I was going to summarize that, I'd do analyze descriptive statistics, frequencies and height. I just want the frequency tables and press OK. So I can see here 131 in the first group, 38 in the second, two in the third, a total of 171. Now, assuming the null hypothesis that your leaf miners are equally distributed at the different heights, that 171 should be divided equally into each of the three categories. So you should have 57 in each. Now this is a bit of a silly hypothesis because I don't know any tree that looks like a perfect cylinder unless you're doing topiary. They're wider at the bottom, they get more pointy as they go up, they get less branches and they get less leaves. So the reason that you're seeing less leaf miners at the higher ranges is because there's less tree at the higher ranges. This does not surprise me as being a very bad null hypothesis. But anyway, we're going to test it out. So I've got two ways of doing this. If I've got the raw data like this, I can just go and do the hypothesis test. Now, this is a single sample of data, which is qualitative. You put them in the three categories, which are labeled one, two, and three. So to do analyze, this is an example of a non-parametric test. I'm basically testing out to see if the distribution of leaf miners fits the hypothesis that I have, which is they're equally distributed and they should be 57 in each of the groups out of 171. Now there'll be a bit of noise, so you won't get exactly 57 in each of them, but if there's the same probability of finding a leaf miner at the three different heights, the numbers should be roughly equal. Now this is a very clear example where they're not, but let's just do it. Now it's a non-parametric test and I have a single sample. It's only one column of data. So when I click on this, it's opening up a wizard. To run the wizard, you press run, but we need to define a few things. So for a start, it's going to automatically figure out what your data is and what hypothesis you want to test and what test you're going to carry out. So it's pretty good. You should be happy about that. 
you can go into fields to pick which column is the one that you actually want to uh, carry out the test on. In this case, there's only height, so there's not a lot of choice. If you had multi a much bigger file with lots of other options, then you can just pick a single column that you want to focus on. The next thing is settings. You can get it to automatically choose the test based on the data, which is best for novice use, or otherwise you can customize. So I could do uh, binomial test, a chi-squared test, a kolmogorov Smirnov test, or a Wilkinson signed ranks test, or a runs test. I'm going to leave it on fully automatic and see what it does. I'm hoping, and it should do, a chi-squared test. So now let's run the test, run it fully automatically. I was breathing a sigh of relief. So it gives me a summary of what it's done. So the null hypothesis is the categories of height occur with equal probability. So there's an equal amount in the three categories. It's a one sample chi-squared test. Yes, it is. It's a goodness of fit test. Is the significance below 0.05? Yes, it's so small, it's absolutely zero. So they say reject the null hypothesis. There is a difference in probability between the different heights. Here's a more detailed summary of the chi-squared uh, test statistic. So there were 171 in the total data set. The test statistic that was calculated is 155.474. There are two degrees of freedom and the asymptotic significance. So this is the p-value that you want is zero. So this sort of mucky green color is your hypothesis and the blue is what you actually see. And as you can see here, there's a long, large difference between reality and the hypothesis. So that's one way of doing it. Now, if you'd got data which is summarized like this to have two columns, one which is height and the other one is frequency at that particular height, you can still use SPSS to do the same process, but we need to do something extra. So what we need to use is this menu called the data menu, and we need to go down to weight cases. So what you're going to do is pick which one of those columns you're going to weight the cases by. Now you're going to weight them by whichever value variable measures frequency. Now in this case, that will be the one labeled frequency. So you press OK. So what that has effectively done within SPSS has made 100, 131 ones, 38 twos and 23s. It's recreated internally the set of raw data that I did by hand. You can't see it, but it's there. So now if I go to analyze, so if I go to analyze on this set of data, I go to non-parametric tests again, I go to one sample, I go to fields, and it's got a choice of two, you've got height and frequency, it's put height in already because it's weighted on frequency, settings again, choose the test based on the data, and I can run that calculation, and it will give me exactly the same results as I had before because I'm doing exactly the same hypothesis test. So this is the, that's the transformation. So you've got 171, you've got 138 or whatever it is of the first ones. No, 131 of the first one, 38 and two. So I have done it two different ways. I can give you the data in either 
perform that and you should be able to carry out a goodness of fit test. Before, when you were looking at normal distributions and you did a kolmogorov smirnoff test, it effectively does exactly this. It calculates how you should distribute your data across a normal distribution or a, a, a non-continuous version of the normal distribution, which is actually a binomial distribution. And it then figures out if the data you observe is the same as the data from this perfect normal distribution. Now, I'm going to stop there on this video, and then I'm going to show you something a bit more detailed.